go ahead with it. Oh my God, I'm so excited to see you guys. I'm so excited to be here tonight. This is a signature songwriting guide, getting your message and your music and out to the world. And pardon my shadow on the left side. We have a little issue with our camera. Um, and my, my Logitech plugged in is not working. But it doesn't matter. Technology is not going to stop us. Post in the chat where you're tuning in from. I want to know. Um, share a link to your music. Um, we do listen. Oh, my God. Mark Lynn, so amazing to see you. Sarah, Sydney. Oh, my God. Um, King David, Andrew. Who else is here? Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Amber. Um, I saw a whole bunch of people earlier as we were getting ready. Um, welcome, everybody. I'm so psyched about tonight. Um, again, apologies for the camera. I have a little shadow over here on my left side, but we're just going to carry on. We've got a great uh, webinar for you, free training. We're so excited to introduce you to our songwriters tonight as well. So uh, they're going to come on in about half an hour. So I'm going to give you this introduction. Songwriters are coming and then woo, blast off. Okay. So welcome to all music creators. We love all people who create music. We love all musicians of all types of all walks of life. If you're a singer, a songwriter, you're in a band, musician, performer, songwriter, lyricist, uh, pr uh, producer, composer, instrumentalist. You have music out in the marketplace, or you're just putting music out, but you're really ready to up-level, and that's why you're here. And something in our materials or what we're saying is speaking to you. So those of you that come to my webinar, so our webinars are our people, our tribe. And we have a lot of people from our tribe, actually, that are currently working with us. Give us a shout-out if you're currently working with us or just finished a program. Um, I see a lot of you here. Uh, come to these webinars as well because there's we don't get fluffy webinars. There's so much value here. So tonight we say, got your cup of green tea, your glass of champagne, or your aquapana water because grab a pen. I want you to have a little, a little liquid beverage next to you. I want you to have your little pen next to you and your little pad because you're going to be furying. You're going to be uh, scribbling furiously as we move through tonight because there is so much juicy information. You're just going to love it. You're going to get so inspired uh, by all the songwriters tonight. So how badly do you want or need your music to make an impact? Oh, my God, right? Like you won't grow your fan base if you, music doesn't truly really connect with people. And if you ask a musician, do you want a million dollars or do you want to connect with a million people, they always say, I want to connect with people, right? Because that's what it's about. We pour our emotions, our heart into our art. And then we really want to speak to people out there. So the truth is there is a secret weapon in music, and you're going to learn it today. And it's something that no one's talking about out there. Uh, as an artist, uh, you are only as good as your music. Uh, wherever you are on your path, we can help you grow. We have helped thousands and thousands of people over three decades from New York City uh, become successful in the music business. And I'm really happy to help all of you, any of you, do that. Oftentimes, people in this room, which you can't see, which is blocked by this ghost of a thing over here on my left from the camera, which is being totally weird. Uh, people will sit in my studio and literally cry. There's tissues here right on the desk saying, why didn't I find you 10 years ago? Oh my God, you did Kate. Woo! Um, and it really is, you know, this music business thing is not an easy thing to figure it out, but we try to make it simple for people. I built a high six figure success for my company on our way to seven. Also had mega success as a musician, singer, songwriter, got a record deal, toured, blah, 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 blah. All of that is true. But regardless of where your music career is or where it's taken you, you are here right now, and that's what's important, okay? Um, what matters most to us as a company, myself and my team who work tirelessly around the clock, we really do, we have a small team, we have very dedicated people here. Uh, what matters to us is that your music flows up because to us, your success is our success, okay? So these are the real wins my students have reported that you're going to hear about tonight. We have no time for fluffy webinars, super psyched, going to be revealing lots of secrets, the three just to top off the, the webinar, but there's lots of really insider information that most people don't talk about out there to artists. Most people are talking about Facebook ads and marketing. And while that's good and important, and we have a lot of secrets to those things as well, the most important thing you're going to learn tonight, uh, which without you really won't get to that stage where you're really connecting. So this happy hour is for you. Ooh, I want my mojito. 
um, <laughs> if you choose whatever you choose, because you might be like, you're coming here tonight because you know that there's more and you want, you know that you have within you the ability to do this. And I know that because I was an artist and I know what it feels like. And you know on your good days that you have that ability to get all the way. And so you know that if you just have the right information, if you just have the right people helping you, correct, that you can really do it and you can bring your message and your mission to the world, right? Um, hey, am I cutting out to you guys? Because I just got a note that I'm cutting out. Am I cutting out or is it working okay? Let me know, okay, you guys? Let me know, working? Okay, good. Um, excellente, excellente. What you're gonna learn today is that I want you to win. I want you to win and my team wants you to win and we want artists to win. And that's what we're all about. Secrets you're gonna learn. Secret sauce that connects you to your fans, blows up your following. What makes so many careers fall flat. How to make sure that doesn't happen to you. How putting all your eggs in one basket is not wise and it could be holding back your career. And this is something that a lot of artists do, but we'll set you clear on that trajectory tonight and on how to, how to not do that. Uh, if artists who are a little more advanced, why you might be plateauing, and these secret ingredients to change that. Big picture mistake most people make and the specific techniques and methods uh, that industry tastemakers and artists have used to get to be successful. And I've watched that happen over 30 years uh, here in New York City, dealing and working with some of the top uh, biggest artists in the world. Plus your swag bag at, the, bag at the end. Do not leave early and miss the gems. Live panel with my CCBM songwriting team. Oh my God, these guys are gold. Uh, Q&A, rare chance to ask them anything and rare, ask to, rare chance to ask me as well. Uh, exclusive bonus class, bonus class only available to folks here live. Uh, we give big discounts on our webinars that will be coming up at the end as well. Offer to join, join private community of music and mentors of dedicated and driven musicians to move the needle on your career this year before the end of this year. Let's go into next year with a bang, knowing who you are, knowing your sound and direction, and really uh, taking your next project uh, by the reins, okay? The good news is artists are redefining the music industry. You see artists popping up every single day now that are in control of their content. They're not listening to labels anymore. Even big labels are becoming more cooperative, which I never thought I would see happen. There's a bigger shift of power than ever before in your favor. So uh, BMG spearheaded a new uh, music publishing company about five years ago, um, and they're giving 75% of their royalties uh, to the artists. Um, this is um, unheralded. This is unusual. Uh, this is, uh, they wanted to get ahead of the curve because they know this is where it's going. Okay. But the truth is, is that labels are starting to be more flexible even uh, as we move into this new era of music and these new career flexibilities reflect the creative as well as the economic artists have a little bit more creativity. Um, music continues to grow the RIAA 2018 mid-year report, right? We see that streaming is still rising. Um, impressive growth uh, of 10% to the first half of 2017. So it's, it's, it's the steady rise that's happening and continues to happen. We'll see the chart in just a minute. There's a lot of takeaways from this mid-2018 report that it is a streaming world. Streaming has uh, represents 75% of all revenue, okay? Um, and the growth spurt of streaming is still rising and still incredible. Uh, will the good times last? Uh, you know, that last for a while. Uh, and so this is the most important uh, time for you to be in the industry, growing with the industry. Vinyl is having its revenge. It keeps growing. It's accounted for uh, 200 million in the first half of 2018, up from 12.8%. So vinyl is definitely where it's at. Downloads are still going down. Downloads are still going down, but streams are going up. Streams are going up, downloads are going down, okay? But look at this chart. Music continues to grow, but I'm bum, it never dies. Music is where it's at, okay? Music industry revenue in the United States from 2012 to 2021. Look at that, 20 billion expected in 2021. So we see the steady climb from 2012, right? 2012, steady climb. And that's important, why? Because music is getting really good again and you don't wanna get left behind. Now is the time to dig in, do the work and get serious and create your next exceptional piece of music, art, or art out there, right? 
and artists are putting out more interesting work as a result. Freedom of expression is here. Here's the thing, though, that I really want you to understand tonight. Songs are your number one ticket. I had an artist sitting in my studio today. She came to visit me from Sweden, and she's going to music school over there, and she really wanted my analysis. And we, we sat down and spent like three, three sessions together. And you know, at the end of the day, uh, my advice to her is you've got to write songs, right? You know, you can be a singer and you can go on TV shows and the voice and American Idol and America's Got Talent or whatever it is, or Europe's Got Talent, UK's Got Talent, Sweden's Got Talent. Um, but at the end of the day, the thing that really moves you forward in, your, in the industry is your songs. And we're going to talk about that. It's what makes fans connect with you, what makes your music go viral, because it really is about the music. Music, great music travels fast. And marketing is important, but it can't make up for undeveloped musicianship, half-developed uh, songs, have honest songs, a lack of craft or confidence, right? People love great music. They know the difference. They feel the difference. Finding my signature as a singer and songwriter when I did my Circle of Fire record, and it took me a long time to get there, but that's why I can help you get there quicker, okay, from my experience, my experience as an artist, as well as a mentor um, and industry expert. But it opened more door for me, it was fun, like more doors for me finding my actual signature and sound than any other single activity. It's created the most rewarding projects, got me a record deal, connected me with over 50,000 fans, and I'm forever grateful for that experience and I want that for you. I'm Carrie, if you don't know me, last job as a bartender in New York City. Yep, used to bartend way back in the late 80s. Turn found of Carrie Cole Voice of Music, probably before you were born. <clears throat> Vocal coach, mentor, friend, and celebrities do legends and celebrities and emerging artists and all kinds of like amazing people in, in the creative fields. 30 years in business helping and guiding singers and musicians among them. Some of the biggest names in entertainment, Grammy winners, rock legends, uh, contestants on The Voice, American Idol, uh, thousands of emerging artists like yourselves. So I've helped double digits of musicians get record deals, multiple handfuls of get music licenses, thousands of artists move the needle on their careers, tripling their fan base, placing on the billboard charts, signing to booking agents, managers, licensing deals, record deals. No kidding. Uh, plus over three decades of vocal coaching, saving countless singers and celebrities from surgery, restoring their voices, making them strong. That's mama's jam, mama's jam. So a snapshot of artists I've helped in their career, I mean, in their careers, there have been so many at this point, I'm sorry to forget names, it's been three decades. But, you know, and four decades as a professional singer, songwriter, musician, signed a record deal following my why, and that's a story over cocktails sometime, uh, but the author of The Four Agreements heard my work and we did a record together, um, and I was inspired by his work. I met them when they were in the process of writing uh, the book Prayers at following The Four Agreements. Um, and I wrote all this music that was inspired by Miguel's work. And we did a record together. He's a New York Times bestselling author. We sold over 50,000 records now, toured Carnegie Hall, Bluebird Cafe, got a standing ovation at Town Hall, uh, was on the Grammy ballots. And that's a funny story, actually, how I found that out. I'll tell you over cocktails sometime. And including being awarded the Positive Music uh, Association PMA Seal of Excellence. And why I mentioned this here is because it's a very specific award that had a lot to do with the criteria for the selection includes quality songwriting, which we're going to talk about tonight, performances, mixing, mastering with high production values. So they value this record as being of a high production value, quality songwriting, quality performance, mixing and mastering. And so we were really, really, really um, excited to get that kind of an award. And it's really helped us in our work with other artists, teaching them how to put out material of a high caliber. But enough about me. Tonight is about you guys. Here's what you're going to learn. Three secret tweaks to make your music instantly connect. Major career advice and songwriting is well from the CCBM songwriting team. They're all going to be here with us tonight. The process of writing signature songs, how to find and convey your message through your music, so important how to find your artist persona, who you really are, the ins and outs of the co-writing process, how artists whose music is connecting or doing things differently, how to apply these techniques and strategies directly to your career, how to expand your artistry, and how to fix uh, uh, any mistakes that we will definitely outline here so you can avoid. Why most musicians fail to grow, expand, and sustain a successful career in music over the long term, okay? 
Oh my God, Richard Carey Ford from Houston, San Antonio. Oh, Maria's from San Antonio. Richard's from Houston. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm not going to get all caught up in the chat because Mama would just start talking to y'all and get lost and then we wouldn't have a webinar. So here is our signature songwriting guide, getting your message in your music and out to the world, my friends. Uh, this is a fresh approach, all right? So I wanted to touch on the things that most uh, songwriting courses for sure and that people really aren't talking to artists about. And these to me are the things that actually move them forward. You know, uh, this, this program we're gonna talk about tonight is it's a bit about craft for sure. It's, it's definitely craft related, but not in the typical songwriting way, right? Not in the typical writing hit song techniques or regular songwriting advice, right? Uh, because to us, that has a big gaping hole in it when it comes to signature writing as an artist, and we're going to talk about that. Um, this guy is left about the craft, less about the craft of songwriting, and more about writing songs that fit you like a glove as an artist, that brand your message and your signature sound, and this is where you're going to have a chance to actually stand out. So I wrote the worst songs of my entire life in songwriting classes. I'm not kidding. Um, and it's making me laugh just thinking about them. The big problem with most songwriting classes is that they're for songwriters only. They're not designed for artists who are writing for themselves. And yes, there's a big difference between the two. A songwriting class, that's all left brain with its theories and techniques and craft, the rules of craft. The songwriting experience, that's in your right brain, where you have the freedom to explore and discover what it is you need to share with the world and who you are and what your sound is as an artist, right? Sure, you have to learn the craft, but you also need to understand how to craft an authentic message in your music, right? Otherwise, how are we really going to connect with you? I personally wouldn't give in anything to have that clarity and direction earlier on. It took me a longer time to find it. That's why we have our company. That's why we're doing what we're doing and helping artists actually tap that vein of gold within them sooner than later to find their truth, to resonate with their listeners, and to make a real impact on their careers. That's really what it's about, right? People love great music, they know the difference. And I know it's easier said than done. We're gonna talk about how to take the stories from your life and get them in your music, right? So let's dive in. So, secret number one, it's all about your songs, right? You can have a great voice, you can have a great performance, but if you don't have the material, you won't be able to really strike that chord. A good example is somebody like Jennifer Hudson, an amazing singer, like no doubt an amazing singer but doesn't have the songs. That's why she's not front and center in our minds. It really is about your songs, right? An artist is only as good as their songs because that's how we relate to them, right? So it's the songs that are the vehicle that bring the artist to us, right? If Adele had a great voice and not great songs, she wouldn't have sold over 30 million records, okay? So what many independent artists fail to realize when majorly distracted with all the noise out there about social media and marketing, marketing marketing is the song is the importance of writing songs that truly connect and it is easier said than done no question because it requires such focus to become a great songwriter you have to really focus on the craft and extraordinary quality of their songs and that's why we have bring artists to work with our team and we do this in a very structured specific uh, systematic way so that uh, this, and we'll talk about it tonight, so that the songs are really coming from you, they really are your concepts, but you're working with experts in their field that are way ahead of you that you can take advantage of, right? Because in order to get noticed today, attention today, your songs have to really command people. It's like when I'm listening to a Spotify playlist, and I put playlists on a lot because on Spotify because I like to find new talent, right? So I put playlists on, I'm listening, and I'll be like doing something around the house or working or whatever, and then all of a sudden I hear a voice and I'm like, who is that? Because what's really interesting when you listen to Spotify playlists, you can really tell who's standing out because they grab your attention, right? And it's often the voice, it's what they're saying, it's the production, it's those elements, but it starts with the song. You can't afford for your music not to resonate like that, okay? Secret number two, news of great music travels fast. That's why one of our artists, Jess Best, whom I introduce you tonight, one of our songwriters, blew up on Spotify. She has 2,500,000 list streams of her song more and didn't spend a dime on marketing because the music is that good, because news of great music travels fast. And as an industry pro, I see a lot of 
artists with records that have songs on them that are not strong enough to break through. The songs didn't go the full yardage in really being developed. You know, it's like they were written and maybe they were tweaked a little and that was it. Well, that song might have needed a lot more attention or you might have needed to write another 15 songs to really find the juice, juicy ones. So, uh, uh, you know, a lot of times uh, artists don't write enough or get enough feedback and they only get so far. Songwriting is so valuable that many famous recording artists came up in the ranks as a songwriter first. Bruno Mars, Sia, Pharrell, Jesse J, Julia Michaels, um, famous artists who, they, they were all artists, they were all songwriters first, by the way. All of those people were songwriters first and they became recognized because of all the songs they wrote with the other artists and the industry signed them. So that, that's a real path that uh, is a real viable path in the industry. It happens more than you can imagine. Uh, collabs with famous artists who co-write with or for other artists. Adele co-writes all the time on all her records. Um, she's smart. She wants the best writers. They're always her concepts and what she has to say, but she wants the best crafters and the best writers to work with. Ryan Tedder writes with Adele quite a bit from One Republic. He writes with a lot of other writers, very smart. Beyonce co-writes, Alanis Morissette, Harry Styles, Ed Sheeran, Jay-Z, Prince, Bonnie Red, Coldplay. Basically everyone in the industry um, really uh, who's smart co-writes. The greatest part, songwriting partnerships of all time. Look at those guys. Oh my God. John Lennon, Paul McCartney, Elton John, Bernie Token, uh, Mick Jagger, Keith Richards, Carol King, Garrett, Jerry Goffin, Ben Lieber, Jerry Stoller back in the day. Um, so they know the power of collaboration. Uh, two heads are better than one, right? When you find the right people to work with that are into the craft and into writing for the artists, which we're going to talk about today. But they know that other writers can sometimes inspire songs that they might not have gotten to on their own, songs that could really be the ticket, um, like that song, I Can't Make You Love Me, um, that now I'm forgetting who wrote it, the, the collaboration of the two guys who wrote it. Um, you know, it's hard. The, the reason, the reason co-writing can be so incredible when you have the right team is that it's hard, if not impossible, to have perspective on your own work. And when you write with others, you benefit from their perspective. It's really important. Uh, they know the value of writing great songs and benefit of co-writing. It doesn't take anything away from your artistry. It only adds to it. It's not about your ego. It's about writing the best song that will move people. Because when you have the best song, magic happens, right? And co-writing will help shape your, your artistry. It's hard to honestly evaluate your own work, right? You want to open up that creative dialogue. Uh, our tweet the other day, I've heard from artists who are afraid that co-writing will deprive them of the music identity. The opposite is often true. Adele keeps, keeps her identity consistent through every collab by creating the seeds of songs and then bringing the other, other music pros to the process to enhance their craft, which is what we do. We get the seeds of the song from the artist and then we bring artists, uh, songwriters of a high caliber to write with them through the A&R process that really helps artists nail their sound and direction like they never have before. Secret number three, the songs are really about forging an emotional bond with your listeners, and real life is more interesting than fiction. So our whole thing is about uh, writing from who you are, pieces of your life, right? Songs are the vehicle to make people feel powerful emotions. It validates the emotions they're going through, experiences they're going through, and that's really how we connect. And so if you really want to connect with guys, you need to really uh, connect with yourself and the the vein of gold inside of yourself that you're waiting to tap of the things that you really need to say and came here on this planet to say. The best and most effective way to make an emotional bond with your fans is to write compelling, emotional, authentic songs from your life. And we're going to hear about that from the team today. Uh, here's three new artists whose latest albums, stories from their lives are deeply connecting with their fans and blowing up around the world as a result. John Moreland in the upper left-hand corner, phenomenal writer writing about his life. Um, Casey Musgraves, a gorgeous new record in the golden hour about her life. Um, SZA wrote this uh, quite uh, provocative record uh, about her life. Um, and these, these artists are blowing up. This is what people want to hear today. SZA, uh, Solana Rowe is one of those artists spearheading the free expression movement and fans are responding. She wrote a record, an incredible record that spoke, became a voice for young women, particularly of young women of color through its message of sexual liberation and emotional honesty. And it was so honest, she was, a she was scared to put it out. 
Hey, she was scared to put it out. And that's where you should be if you're doing it right, okay? You're telling the truth, right? And at the 60th Annual Grammy Award, she was the most nominated woman with five nods in the Best New Artist. So what that's saying is she told the truth in a very brave and courageous way, so much so that she was scared to actually put the record out, and she got rewarded for it. Do you see where this is going, guys? You get inspired? Woo! Brutal honesty, right? The head of her label says that self-doubt is her kryptonite, okay? Sam Smith was signed to a label manager and team who kept telling him to lose weight and write hits, and he just got fatter and wrote shittier songs. And he said, screw it. He went and sat in a hotel room in London, and he wrote about his truth. And he wrote about being 21 and lonely and gay and cried his eyes out, and he wrote In the Lonely Hour. And ladies and gentlemen, he won four Grammys for that record. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? Are you hearing me? This is something that would not have happened if he had not had guts, okay? Uh, Jeremy Zucker obsessively created his music in his home studio for three, three to four years. He's one of my students who's just blowing up all over the place now. And he's like millions and millions of streams on Spotify. And he established his, his, his catalog before he got signed. That way he was really able to prove himself, but he worked hard. He worked hard on his songs. What did he work hard on? He worked hard on his songs. Joey Fatora, um, obsessively writing songs for herself and other artists the past decade. She got signed to management, the publishing deal, and she just wrote for the Chainsmokers on her last, on their last album. Uh, but she's out there writing. She's writing, writing, writing. Are you guys hearing me? Okay. Dan Wilson writes his own song with his band, Closing Time. He writes uh, hit songs for other artists like Adele. He wrote someone like you with her and the Dixie Chicks, Not Ready to Make Nice. His signature is signature songwriting what's on the tip of tongue, and we'll talk about that coming up. If they can do it, so can you. I realized, you know, when our students' careers started blowing up unexpectedly using these techniques we're talking about here today, we knew we were onto something and we wanted to bring it to you. But what you shouldn't do is to do nothing, okay, after you listen to this, right? My studio currently, this was last, oh, uh, this was March last year. Our co-writes now are somewhere between 200 and 250 songs per year. Uh, we take great care in introducing songwriters to artists to the right songwriters, and we do a lot of a &R, developing the concepts and developing the sound and direction, and we work with a lot of producers and Grammy award-winning producers with their artists, helping them find their sound. So we're super excited. And today, I'm bringing to you the CCBM a &R Signature Songwriting Program and our CCBM songwriting team. Let me tell you a little bit about signature songwriting and then introduce the team. So what is signature songwriting? How do you apply it to you and your music? What's the co-writing going to do for you and your music uh, when you're already a good writer or if you're not a good writer yet, right? And what is this about our songwriting team? But I'm bump. So I started out as a songwriting musician first, wrote my first song at seven called Tell Me Why. Hilarious. Tell me why. Um, and during my career as a vocal coach, I would always encourage my singers to write, primarily because I knew any chance of success in this business had to do with writing, okay? So... Uh, sure, artists have to learn the craft, but they also need to understand how to craft an authentic message through their music. And it's not a process to be taken lightly. I think we have some of our songwriters are coming on already. Um, so give me just a moment as I run through a little bit more and I'll introduce them. So the thing is that the access to the, the writers that you're really uh, wanting um, that you should be working with are not very accessible or available unless you're already mainstream, okay? Um, unless you're an established artist with a significant following or signed to a label. But luckily for you, I've made it my mission to provide an independent and to provide independent and emerging artists with these kinds of major label resources and connections, right? And so this includes giving uh, students direct access to award-winning uh, professional songwriters. So we are currently working with a wide array of artists at a variety of stages in their career, uh, independent emerging artists worldwide in Australia, Canada, England, Europe, Asia, Africa, South America, and the US, singers on hit TV competitions, professional recording artists and musicians who've been out there for a while, actors and dancers and performers trying to expand their platform. We're currently working with, we have a young 17, 18-year-old actually, punk rock girl, uh, we wrote the record with her. We uh, produced it with, uh, we found the right producers for her, releasing her project. Um, an actress who's trying to raise uh, awareness about suicide in honor of her deceased sister through her music. Uh, electronic pop singer in her 30s who wanted to find herself. Sarah, she just released her music. Theatrical alt pop singer, country, rap, folk rocker in her 50s we worked with. 
It's all across the board is why I'm telling you this. A well-known uh, established Latin artist, Crystal Marie in the upper left, she's been signed several times. She came to us to reinvent her music and find her sound. She's working with our team. She just sang with Andrea Bocelli, oh my God. Um, Dylan Hartigan on The Voice, um, the singer songwriter is developing her song. We work with country artists, uh, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Many shapes and sizes. Sometimes we work just with um, songwriters or just with producers who are writers as well. Our mission is to help as many artists as we can in becoming better songwriters, better artists, and gaining the advantage of professional development and writing songs that really impact their careers. And it's not just co-writing or vocal arrangements, it's A&R. We use a system of A&R, artists and repertoire, that helps artists identify with greater clarity and vision their signature sound. Uh, and deeply connect and evolve their music. It's a team of people, myself, the songwriters, and my team of experts that help to evolve your sound and raise the bar on your music instead of lower it and help put your message on the page, okay? So our philosophy is to make the music you want to hear, not what you think people want to hear. It's a blend of both, but it really is about putting more of you in your music and not making what you think the industry wants to hear. Um, the songs that resonate the most come from real life, um, and I'm going to introduce our songwriting team. How and why I chose them? Songwriting skill is the number one list on my thing on my list. They write songs that deeply connect. Their own songs resonate with people in a way that garnered millions of streams on Spotify. They've all blown up on Spotify in the last couple of years. Extensive experience in co-writing with other artists. Uh, I've known them all for um, about a decade or longer. Um, their ability to write in multiple genres, the nature of their personality. Um, they're really amazing people to hang with and really easy to be with. And their desire to help other artists in telling their story through their songwriting. I love my team. They're some of the best and most generous writers I know. They have a long history in signature songwriting. We have a long history together. They're amazing people and we work very well together and we leave our egos at the door and our work with artists. We are here to serve the artist and the song, and they all write killer freaking songs. So we are offering these A&R these services of a major label without the major label or the control. So ready to meet them? Let's do it. Now, as we are talking, I want you to jot down your questions for the Q&A uh, that comes up with the songwriters so that when we you know, hit that moment of Q&A, we've got uh, questions in the chat and we can uh, roll along through this, okay? So jot down your questions as they're talking and please only post in the chat when the Q&A opens up. So I'm gonna introduce um, our head songwriter uh, is Stolar. Uh, he's performed with Calvin Harris and Red Hot Chili Peppers. He currently has cuts out with Daryl Hall and John Oates train and he, his song, uh, Brooklyn in the Summer for Al Black blew up this past summer. Uh, he co-writes with uh, Carolyn Pinnell, The Boys Help to Get a Label Deal. He's represented by uh, UTA Universal and is penned over a talent agency and is penned over a thousand songs in his co-write uh, catalog. Um, and he says, with CCBM, I've really had an opportunity to develop the artist signature song ready. And to me, that means a song that resonates most when you sing it. That is when, when it clicks, when you're writing with someone and you can feel that this song is for that person. Um, and it's one of his favorite things to do. He's also a big mental health advocate. Uh, CCBM songwriting expert Miranda Glory is a graduate of Berkeley, and she got a degree in songwriting there. She's written with established songwriters and producers. There's a long list here. You can kind of read, rather than me saying it, uh, through Tommy Boy, she released single, a couple of singles, and um, her single, Instant Gratification, was released on Selected Sony Music. She's also signed with a manager and is a publishing deal with Cobalt. Um, I'm not sure what just happened there. Um, okay, here we go. Uh, she says, Carrie's process of signature songwriting has really spoken to me as an artist because I feel like the best songs I've ever written were the ones that I was just being completely honest, bearing my soul, and that's one of the hardest things to do, but it's what people really connect with. And she says, it, what, it is what always leads her to her next opportunity. Uh, songwriting expert Jess Best and her producer Connor Schultz uh, recently turned on record deal after blowing up on Spotify. She received over 2.5 million streams of her song More after reaching number four on the US viral charts. Um, she released an album last year that sold out in three hours called Velvet. So she says, I'm addicted and especially to the process of working with other artists and to realize that music, uh, to help them realize music that feels authentic for them. And I love this idea of signature writing because it means we're not going to settle for anything but a song that feels fresh 
and pushes your story to the page in a way that you haven't done before. Okay, so uh, this is not our Q&A, but this is our actual uh, interview. So I'm going to bring all the songwriters on now so you guys can open up your cameras. Hey, Jay. Hey, Miranda. Can we hear you guys? Say something. I can't hear you. Hello. Hello. Hi, Jay. Hey. Hi, Miranda. Hello. Hey. Hi, Carrie. Hi, Miranda. Hey. hey. Is Jess is here, too. I see you. She's trying to open up her uh, camera. Uh, so thank you so much for coming, you guys, tonight. Super psyched about having you here with us. I know you've got busy, busy, busy lives, um, as we all do, but really excited about tonight. So um, let's just start. I'm just going to open it up with some questions um, to you. And whoever wants to answer, please um, speak up. Uh, so how did you guys, how did you get your start in songwriting? Like what has led you uh, to become a songwriter? Just share some, uh, some of that with, with people who are listening here tonight uh, so they can hear how you guys kind of came to it. Mm. Um, I'll go. Do you mean professionally or like personally, emotionally? Well, I think it's kind of both. Yeah. Like, how did you well, I would say, what, 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 how, how did it happen? There was piano in the other room. I was seven and I would like sneak in there and write these weird little songs. I actually found one recently. They're not good, but they exist. So I would think that I, I just, I need it. It helps me. It's like just a huge part of uh, how I exist and connect to myself and connect to the world and find a way to communicate. So songwriting for me is just like breathing in a way, as cliche as that might sound, like it really does feel like something I need and want to do and will do always, no matter how much money I make or how successful I am. Um, I feel like it helps you get your, your thoughts down and helps you process things? No, it does, but I would say that it's more... It's how I can express myself clearest to human beings. I think the way that if I feel something, the way that I can express it to you in the clearest possible way is by writing a song about it and one of the, the good kind of songs. <laughs> so that for me is uh, why I go through it. Because you know, it's not, not easy to write songs all the time. I'm sure everybody here knows. It's not um, yeah, but I love it. Like I legitimately what? love it. Miranda, what is it like for you? Or how did it start for you? Um, I think it started for me because as a teenager, I was going through a lot like everybody else, um, going through breakups, whatever. And I think I just really needed a way to let out all of the things that I was feeling. And I'd always done music and singing and I thought, well, like, why not just write a song? After I write one, I was just sold on it being what I wanted to do for my life. Um, I think for me, always the process. I think you froze for a second. Miranda, you're frozen. I think we have a little glitchy going on here with the video. Um, do you oh, it had me on the edge of my seat, too. She was talking about the process. <laughs> For me, the oh, we lost Miranda. Oh, she loves the process, though. She's great at rhyming. <laughs> it's one of her strongest skills. Yes, to yes. rhyme in like an honest way. She's particularly good at it. That's what we were talking about. Like, how did you get started? What made you start songwriting? Well, I know one of the things that made you start songwriting. <laughs> what was that, Carrie? <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> um, well, yeah, I mean, I was lucky enough to work with Carrie when I was a teenager. And I was always really into singing, and I started my musical life doing musical theater. But I just remember working on singing and Carrie telling me, like, you can't just sing well. You have to have something to share. Um and that really resonated with me. And I started writing and kind of just got hooked on it. And then really saw how powerful it is when you can lock into that. And when 
you know, if you're pursuing music, it just like really makes sense to like find the word, the words that you want to say rather than just expecting to sing um, like whatever. Um, and then from there, it just really blossomed into like my, my outlet, my like balance. Yeah. Right. Like you had to really like, yeah. I mean, as I think everyone does, had to yeah. really with it until you kind of got um, as a writer. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I feel like that when that switch happened, when I didn't want to just perform and I was like, oh, I really find a lot of fulfillment out of the writing process. That was when I realized I had to just kind of like, you know, hold up and work on it for a while um, mm -hmm. to feel like I had something to offer. Mm -hmm. Miranda, do you want to finish your sentence over there? Is she frozen? Did I get cut off? You yeah, got that frozen. <laughs> yeah, you were like, oh really? no. Yeah. Where did she Okay, go? I'm going to start again. Okay, sorry. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, I think I started songwriting because I was going through like hard, hard times and as teen or teenagers usually do. I think I'd always been singing and doing music and I started writing and I got kind of addicted to that process and I knew that it was what I wanted to do from there on out. Um, am I still frozen? No, oh, you're good. I'll, I'll, am I I good? No. Okay. I'll just give you a nod. Okay, you. cool. Um, <laughs> okay, sounds good. Um, but yeah, I just, I fell in love with the idea that I'm taking negative emotions and experiences and feelings and turn into something positive and beautiful. Um, I found that process extremely therapeutic and that is how I express myself. And I think that's what I love about songwriting. Absolutely. What brought you to the professional world of songwriting? Like how did you, how did you... Um, that way from kind of, you know, writing for yourself into a professional atmosphere. I think, well, I may go to Berkeley and from there, I just kind of, I just always knew that I wanted to make it a prof professional thing. So I took my life to my as well could, um, to the next level, basically. So and people I could collaborate with, work with, and then eventually moving to uh, work with my manager, like, and of course, I'll, I'll it all you, went break, for me. Up. So she, I'll basically just kind of say what she said, which is that she went to Berkeley and then coming out of Berkeley, you know, wanted to make it professional and then um, went to the songwriting thing and in Costa Rica or something and you met your manager and then it all started to kind of happen from there and then got signed to Cobalt and now is like writing in to LA and is writing with a lot of uh, songwriters and artists and producers and that kind of thing. Yeah, say. exactly. All kind of like fell in. I started getting deep with what I wanted to say and being honest. And I think that's like the main point. So you felt a real turn when you started to be a little braver as a writer, being more authentic and honest. I think that's a yes. I'm going to say that that's a yes. <laughs> You're still breaking up. Okay, there she goes. All right. Okay, so what, What you know, you guys, so we just ran SSC last year, which is our signature songwriting program. We started in May. And for the first time I brought the songwriters, I brought these three songwriters into the program uh, to write with artists, right? We lost you for a sec, Um, but you're back now. But we brought these three songwriters in to write in this program. And I want to hear from them, from each of you, um, like what that process was like, because we're dialing out an A&R process where the artist comes to work with me first and we really go deep into like your history of what you've listened to and kind of what you're listening to now, um, flush out the sound a little more fully, more um, specifically, and then talk about what's on your mind, what's going on in your life and build out these song concepts. So by the time they get to the songwriter, the songwriter has a really nice profile to start from that's kind of a deeper view of that artist. 
than they might if they just walked into a regular co-writing session. Uh, then the artist meets with them for a prep session, you just meet and talk, then you do the co-write, then the finishing session. So can, can each of you talk about, feel free to use an example, but what that process was like and, um, and how that, um, how that enabled you uh, to be a little more thorough maybe in your work or what the result was for you. Do you want to just do this in an order where I go first? I go first. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, we'll all just stare at you, <laughs> loving. Um, it's an interesting process. I mean, for I think all three of us, like we write songs in many different capacities, and often you're just coming into a room and writing a song, whether it's for you as an artist or for another artist who's in the room or just with people and you don't know where the song's going to go. And I'd say in all of the situations, nobody's really prepared with any information about who the person is and what they're looking for. That's usually happening on the spot. And even for a lot of artists, it's hard to come in and say, this is who I am. Like here in 90 seconds, here's my deepest shit, the truth of what I want to be, songs that I love, references, songs I've written, where I want to go, how big I want to get, where I'm from, what happened with my mom, what happened with my girlfriend, you know what I mean? All that stuff. And what was really cool about this last round of SSC and I guess the whole a &R process is like, whoever's watching right now, by the time we get into a room, I'm sitting down and I can see all of the things that you've gone through, Carrie. And here are three potential song ideas, sometimes even with titles. And here's your backstory that you shared and is coming from your words and a list of songs that you want. So it's a really great starting place. And for me, it's just made everything work. It enabled us to get deeper, faster, and skip mm -hmm. a whole... I don't know, I'm allowed to curse on here. I curse a lot. A whole bunch of bullshit, you know? Because mm -hmm. by the time we're starting, we already know who each other are enough that mm -hmm. we're starting from a real place. And I actually did find that extremely helpful. And mm -hmm. you're able to like extrapolate titles from the different concepts that were there and kind of vibe off of them and find other things or find, oh, no, 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 I didn't mean to say that. That was misinterpreted. This is what I meant. Mm -hmm. Like, no matter what, it ended up strong and connected. Um, and because of that, we're getting, like, incredible signature songs that felt like that person in, like, 90 minutes to two hours, yeah. which I find the best ones come. So, uh, yeah. You can ask Carrie. I was resistant at first. I'm resistant mm -hmm. to all new things at first. But then I was like, nope, she's right. This is great. This mm -hmm. form is great. The prep sessions are great. Just getting to meet everyone. So I apologize, yeah. Carrie. You were oh, right. No, no, it's totally cool. I'm, I don't mind when people disagree. I think it makes things more interesting because I always want to hear what you think, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm open to it if it's not working. But I felt like you know, and I heard back from a lot of the people that were in SSC last time and they were like, they felt like that prep session was so powerful because they got the chance to just get comfortable, with it. you know, rather mm -hmm. than rushing into a co-write and you guys discussing it. So we kept it on the table, but that no, was interesting. Uh, and, and what, so, so Jess, um, what was that process like for you? And, and, you know, did, what kind of songs came about from it that, I don't know. Do you have an example of something you can share of the, the, a the, the co-write in SSC that really worked or clicked? Well, yeah, actually, I see that Signe is in here. And I felt like she was a really good ex Hi, Signe. Um, I felt like she was a really good example of how her A&R form really helped us because it was like, all right, you want to write a song about your grandpa. And like, that was where we started rather than like, you know, the conversational, how are you feeling today? Let's like kind of develop some of the things that you're thinking about. And it was just like so concrete of a place to start that I felt like it developed for us 
like really quickly and organically. And, you know, in our prep session, we chose that topic and I felt like from there, it gave us just like a really solid starting place in our writing session because like things had been brewing already. Um, and I think the song came out really beautifully and it's really touching. And, um, yeah, it's I felt a gorgeous like- song. I mean, I think Sydney was talking about playing it for somebody and they were like crying and stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. Very heartfelt. It was really, it was really beautiful. Yeah. So I, I mean, everything that Jay said, I think it, I, I think most of all, it just like helps you get right to the point. And it's like, okay, we're here to write a song that's meaningful and real. And it's just like unbelievably helpful to have a starting place like that, that we like have right at our fingertips. Absolutely. Yeah. Jay, can you talk for a moment about um, the song that, uh, about Brooklyn in the summer, just because I think you, you've said that that song was probably one of your more personal songs. And talk about why you think that that actually Resonated in the way it did. <clears throat> Resonated with people in general. Yeah, and and with Ella wanting to do it, like why why do you think that song uh, and the process of writing it, how it would be for you personal? To it? Yeah. Um, well, like very long story short about me as a human, uh, I was in a relationship for a while and we lived together and then broke up like two months before that song was written two or three months. And about that time, I started going through a, a daily process that involves like a morning improvisation of melodies and lyrics, just like turning on a recorder <clears throat> and improvising melodies and lyrics for 10 minutes. I call it the dig. And Brooklyn in the Summer came out of one of those moments. Like I had done two of those improvisations in a day, sat down at the piano, and this whole song came out. And it taught me that I had been hiding from the truth in my songs. And I was batting, like, I was going to say, like, slamming my head against the wall, but, like, metaphorically, just why isn't this working? Why isn't this working? Why isn't anyone recognizing how good I am, how special I am, you know, like all the shit that we feel. And I think the answer was I was afraid to hurt her. I was afraid to be honest with myself about what I felt. And that song was one of that and a few others in that same week was the beginning of, I'm not lying anymore. I'm just going to tell the truth. And I didn't think anyone was going to like it. I was like, who cares about like my subway trip and the color of my shirt and, you know, my weird metaphors of how broken my heart is, but how much I miss this person. Um, and then when I went and listened back to it a couple of weeks later, I was like, wow, this is just raw and real. And Aloe had, had, and I think to this day, has not taken a song from anyone ever. He's always been a part of the writing. And uh, he's an amazing guy and was just like, this feels so, this feels real and raw. Now look, on the technical side and like song side, it, it was one of those ones, you know, it's like you write a lot of songs. One of those with like the chorus has just got a thing to it. And, and it was, it's a special song. And from a technical aspect, like there's a differentiation between the verses that almost sing, sound like sung rap or something. And then the chorus is like an octave and a half above the verse. Like there's something about the song on a technical level that I do think resonates. But absolutely, what I love about it is just that kind of like what I was saying before. It's just. I couldn't have said that the way that it sounds. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that applies to what we're doing here and what you've always told me, Carrie, is like, what's the song that resonates most when you sing it, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, Not when anyone else sings it. I mean, there's something about that. You know, it's, you know, earlier in the webinar and the training, I was talking about SZA and about Sam Smith and about how, you know, SZA wrote that record and she was terrified to put it out because it was really raw and it was really real, but that's what people connect to. Now that doesn't mean they don't connect to a whole bunch of other things, but if you're an artist that's trying to get heard and trying to get attention, if you're writing stuff that is more raw or more real like that and putting your heart and your vulnerability out there, 
and not always in the way of a sad song, you know, if you have broken the summers, not at all. It's the intensity with which you write with that people are going to resonate to. It's like I'm listening to a Spotify playlist, you know, and what's, you know, a lot of times I do that. Like, I'll just put the playlist on and a bunch of people, some I know, some I don't know, I'll be doing something and all of a sudden I'll hear a voice just come on. It's really uh, an interesting, uh, you know, uh, test and like what's standing out, like what's grabbing my attention. And oftentimes, you know, I mean, it's, it's the song, it's the voice, but it's the song. It's what that person is saying and mm. the, the level of craft that's hitting me as well. Like the level of voice for sure, because I'm all about that. But um, we're finding with, like with Sam Smith, you know, having been signed, having gone through the music machine and, you know, was not, was having a hard time with struggling and then walking away from all of that. And yes, he had a level of craft. The level of craft has to be there. I'm talking about, you know, that, that level, I'm talking about it as if that's already there. And then what's the other element that's going to kick it over the top. Right. And so when Sam sat in his room, you know, lonely, crying his eyes out, because that's where he was at that point in his life. But he told the truth about it and wasn't afraid to talk about it. Or maybe he was, but he put it down anyway. He just told the freaking truth as much as he possibly could, because that was what was really happening. That's what was so vital and so real. And then you know, won four Grammys for that record. That's not a surprise. Now he has a gorgeous voice, but that's, that's not, you know, you can't just have one of those elements where you're not really going to connect with people, right? You see that as well. So this is this point that I'm always trying to make. Okay. So I mean, all right. <laughs> um, so let's talk about um, any other experiences in your um, co-writes or in, in helping, in you bringing your own message to the page, in helping other artists? Um, does anyone, maybe Miranda wants to talk about a story in like when you said when you started getting raw and real, things started moving forward for you in your career. Do you want to share a story about a song and how that came about? If we have her. <laughs> She's, She's speechless. <laughs> she is speechless. Oh, there she is. Are you hearing us? Miranda, if you want to send like a voice note of your answer, we can like hold it up. Ooh. Yeah, that's true. It's a creative solution. <laughs> yeah. That's a good idea. Why don't you do that? Because you're really breaking up. So why don't you send a voice note to my um, phone and then I can hold it up. Like in iChat, just talk to me like. <laughs> yeah, just mute your mic and then record it there and, and text it to me. Can you guys hear all the people that are in the other room or I'm, I'm fine? A tiny bit. But yeah, I muted. Good. it. Can you hear me now? Who's that? You? Yeah. Miranda. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. Are you muted? Yeah, well, it's been like kicking me off a bunch, so. I'm trying okay. to get it together, but I think I'm good now. Okay, good. Um, um, we were talking about a story of like signature site that that's what we were kind of on the subject mm -hmm. of. Yeah, yeah. I was saying, like if you wanted to tell a story, like you said, when I started getting raw and real, my career started taking off as a songwriter. So, can you you want to share a story about a song and how that came about? Yes, yeah, so the song that I was talking about for example for that when i said that was this song Tate. i basically just poured my heart out and one night i was like crying i'm writing this song i wasn't even thinking about anything except just like letting this emotion out that i needed to go out and saying things that i was scared to say and i didn't actually think i was going to show it to anybody just wrote it because it felt like it needed to come out and I feel like that song really changed my life because that's what led me to my publisher, my manager. It was that song that did it live. People like he broke most up. of the time that I'd written. Obviously now, like 
I'm writing more and more stuff like that, but that was definitely a turning point for me. And I think it's definitely, it's definitely garbled right now, but I think we've got the gist of the message. That's one of my favorite songs, by the way, that you've written and she's gone. Um, so that is one of my favorite Miranda songs. It's called Take. And if you want to go listen to Miranda, listen to Miranda Glory on Spotify. You want to listen to Jay, listen to Stolar um, on Spotify. And Jess is Jess Best on Spotify. You can listen to their music tonight as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Um, so what is your... Um, okay, this is a good question. I'm going to ask Jay. What has co-writing with other songwriters taught you about your writing? Um, first, I'm going to say hi to Jess, by the way. Hi, Jess. Hi, Jay. It's nice to see you. Nice to see you. It's yeah, good to what's see up? You too. It's so good. Um, what? So much. <laughs> I think that's the first <laughs> simple answer is what has what co writing with other people taught me is so much. Just how you don't always have the best idea in the room. It's such a simple concept and it's so hard to do, especially if you think that you're good, because you have to think you're good. You have to believe that you can find the solution to the problem. You have to believe that what you want to express is gonna come out of you. Otherwise, how are you supposed to walk into a room with a complete blank canvas? It's expected to have it painted in a beautiful, interesting way within you know 90 minutes to four hours. But that's been a huge lesson, lesson just for my life in general. Um, and I actually feel vulnerable just talking about it, but just realizing like, oh, okay, it's really important to listen to everybody in the room. That's one. Um, and then if I were to make a broad stroke one, just like different melodies, lyric concepts, ideas, genres, vibes, things that don't come naturally to my melodic sense or my lyrical sense. And then by writing with other people, seeing... It's like seeing the same painting through a different set of eyes, you know, how mm. someone else looks at it in a different perspective and a different way of looking at it. Um, and did it take else, you a while to get there? Did it take you a while to, to get comfortable in that seat? Yeah, yeah. Because one, one way that I approach co-writing and collaboration in general, if it's me, if I'm like driving, and I think about it in terms also as like team. So like a lot of times if I'm coming into a room, I'm serving like the pilot role. Like I'm coming in and I'm, I'm driving the plane for the day. So I make it my mission to just be open, come in and be like, oh my God, I met this girl, or I can't believe my mom said, this and I, I've met these people for three seconds and I'm like let me tell you about my issues with my mother <laughs> but just so that it's removing all barriers and someone feels safe and like oh wow this person is opening up to me and also making them feel a little uncomfortable which I think is good and pushes people to their limits and if you're not uncomfortable why are we doing this in the first place you know what are we talking about if it's not something that's a little bit on the edge um, but I would say that it took a lot yeah like writing a lot of songs um, and working with a lot of people. But again, I didn't mm -hmm. have like A&R sheets going into these sessions. I'm just going in meeting random people. So there's something nice about what we have here where you feel like you're able to know the person a little bit before you get together and start working on something. Um, but we've talked about this many, many times. And uh, for anyone who's new or people that I have met before, we have met, it's just like about doing it consistently. Um, mm -hmm. But when you're co-writing, I find that other people are just a very interesting, like, uh, what are those mirrors called? Not like a haunted house mirror, but those like distorted mirrors. Like every, these people are all a mirror of yourself and giving you different perspectives. If you're going to focus on it in like a personal way of, how you get when you're around another person or how you get when you talk about mm -hmm. your fears of moving forward in life or a relationship with a partner or your relationship to yourself or to the world. 
and getting more and more comfortable with listening to those things that oftentimes, at least for myself, I tend to very or gently push away. Mm -hmm. So instead of that being like, oh, that person asked me about how I feel about living alone. And I was like, I'm fine. That was my first reaction. That's weird. Why was I so defensive about it? You know, just starting to listen more and see what comes up. And it do, it can be uncomfortable at first, but it's usually cathartic. Um, for me, it usually ends up with many, 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 many people crying on my computer screen, which I've talked about and happened today. <laughs> I love that. Break down the, you know, the facade, you know? Yeah. Deeper stuff. Can you talk about, just and, and maybe Miranda too, can you talk about, um, what it was what it's like writing in different genres right mm. here in ssc like we had a reggae artist um we've had um we've even had classical we've had like all kinds of different um folk country pop r b like uh, the gamut mm. in our yeah. last SC. what is that like for you and kind of how do you approach that and with the a and r process we put reference tracks I worked through reference tracks with the singer um, that they love uh, that um, would are, are an example of how they want that song to sound. So the, the artist, the writer does have a really good idea of what they're walking into, the chord progressions, the feel, the, mm -hmm. the that kind of vibe. But what was that like? What's that like for you? And how was how were you able to do that? Because you you graced a couple genres there. It was really beautiful. Mm. Um, well, for me, and I, I guess this also relates to just like the power of co-writing, the way that I continue staying inspired as an artist is just by continuing to learn and being put in situations like when I have never, you know, written in a certain genre, that feels exciting to me because that is pushing me in a way that I haven't been pushed before. And I'm going to put the energy to like explore that with this person and be able to dive into something I haven't been able to before. So in those moments, um, in this past SIC, it brought up just some really interesting conversations also with, um, some of my co-writes. Um, and also I think it did boil down the songwriting process in a way where it's like, if the song is strong, it will translate into style. Um, and that was cool because, you know, I was kind of nervous when I was going into writing a song that I, in a genre that I wasn't comfortable with, but I was like, oh, you know, this is, this is a co-write. We're going to come up with an idea that we both feel is really strong and honest. And from there, we'll translate it into the style and the performance that we feel suits these reference tracks. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just, I, I felt it was a really cool challenge and, um, and I'm just trying to keep growing. So those help me keep growing. And it was awesome. Um, Jay, I remember with, with Trey, you actually went to a producer and kind of got a, got a feel of a track because we were kind of going in this sort of, um, uh, her direction, this like R and B direction. Mm. That was really cool. You went out and kind of sourced something to get you in the vibe for that artist. Yeah, I think I asked a friend who like strictly does rap and R&B music, because she likes stuff with really wild chords, um, to send me the music and then I learned the chords and then wrote something inspired by that and produced something inspired by that. So that was helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's one of her favorite songs. It came across really well. We lost Miranda again. <laughs> um, but Kim, what's your biggest piece of advice for other artists and songwriters, especially in relation to how to find their sound in their mm. writing? Mm. Um, I mean, the first thing that comes to my mind is the same thing I always say, right? every day, at least five days a week. Um, mm -hmm. And co-writing is very helpful too, because you find what's not your sound. 
I've mm -hmm. found that I feel like I'm finally ready now to record a full album, which I have not done in three years. I've done a lot of singles, put a lot of stuff out, but I think the reason I know and I feel ready is I've written like, I don't know, 500 or 600 songs in the last two years. So I'm not saying everyone needs to write that many songs, but when you've done that, it's very, 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 very clear what is you and what's not you. Um, so I feel like there's like a via negativa process. Like there's one by like stripping away everything that is you and starting to dive into things that are other people writing songs in different genres, things that don't necessarily resonate, but still feel good and you enjoy writing the song. And then the ones that are you become very, very clear. Oh, this is who I am. So I can do more of this. Um, but if you're trying to expedite that process, really listening to a lot of music and feeling out, okay, here are five songs that I, I really resonate with. And they're all in this world. Some of them, maybe this one's in the middle and this one pulls a little to the right. This one pulls a little to the left. This one pulls like a little into a different axis. Um, and now I'm going to start to try to write songs that fit into that world. Plus dive into these concepts that are specifically about my exploration of independence as a human or as a woman, you know, whatever it is. Now you've got something that's a pretty specific direction. And if you go and write even 10 songs about that, you have a very, very high chance of getting a few that are strong, that are in this, you know, center of the Venn diagram of genre and center of the Venn diagram of emotion of what you're exploring and you're choosing wisely. It's like if you went up to a blank canvas and you're like, okay, on my uh, palette, I'm going to choose every color on, on earth. <laughs> As opposed to doing that, be like, I'm going to choose like blue, gray, and black. So don't be afraid to write a song over and over again, like the same song or the same concept, the same idea over and over again. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I'm even a fan of repeating yourself. Like if you listen to a lot of the stuff that some of your favorite writers do, and, and I would hope that I'm like this and that everyone is like this, you'd be like, oh, that sounds like Paul McCartney. That sounds like Ryan Tedder. That sounds like Drake. You know, why does Drake sound like Drake? Because he does a bunch of the same stuff all the time. <laughs> but it's him. I think it was Bob Dylan said that most songwriters are writing about four or five things over and over again, you know, mm -hmm. trying to express it. Awesome. So, um, Miranda, what's your biggest piece of advice for uh, songwriters in finding their sound? I think you're muted, babe. I think you're muted. Okay, got it. Sorry about that. Don't worry, it's okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, I'd say my biggest piece of advice to uh, other artists would be to not compare themselves to each other because I think that's a trap and I've fallen in it before. Um, I think like the best way to go about it is to learn what you love about these people that you're admiring and then focus on yourself and figure out what it is about yourself that makes you unique and then literally just write as much as you can. And then, like, just how you kind of were saying, like, if you're unsure if a song is good enough, just write it again or write it and write another one until you're sure that this is, like, what you want to say and who you are. Um, so that's kind of my advice, I'd say. That's amazing. I love that. Um, so um, we're going to go to some questions. I have one more uh, question for both Jay and Miranda. And I think, Miranda, you kicked Jess off now. <laughs> she, anyway, <laughs> joke. Uh, so, what are, you, <laughs> what are you most looking forward to in the next run of SSC? Because in this last run of signature songwriting, like we have about, literally there's probably about seven people from the program that are coming to us to write their albums from the experience of writing with you guys. And they are so pumped to do that. Um, so we're really excited. I mean, I had Trey here the other night and she was like, oh my God, like I have four songs now that like, I've never had before on this level that are, you know, that are the kind of songs I've been looking to write and looking to put out there. Um, 
So I think we're striking a chord with some people and we're super psyched to do it again. Um, what are you most looking forward to in the upcoming signature songwriting after having been through it one round, Jay? Okay, I'm just looking forward to meeting new people. I think that's really it. And helping them find that frequency that when like you strike the bell, it rings up to the heavens. <laughs> But mainly me meeting new people. It's been so great. Making new friends. And you brought up reggae. Like, nothing made me happier than showing up that day, which is like, I love Bob Marley. My favorite album is Exodus. You'd never know this about me, but I listen to it like once a week. So it's just getting to talk to someone who loves that music and chat with them and get to know who they are and experience their life. And then the next moment it's an R and B song and the next moment it's a country song from some girl who lives in Iceland. You know, it's like the people are unbelievable. So I'm excited to meet more of them. Yeah. Miranda, how about you? Um, I honestly just love hearing everybody's stories. I'm like a listener by nature. And I think like, getting to hear people's experiences and like their lives and then like having the honor of helping them put them into a song and into the paper is like it's amazing. And I can't wait to do it again with as many people as possible. So I'm just also excited to just meet more people and, and hear what you guys are going to want to write about. Right. Yay. Awesome. Okay. Let's go to some questions. Um, and then maybe we'll get lovely Jess back on. Diane, maybe can you help help Jess? I don't know why Webinar Jam is kicking us the frick off. Um, <laughs> why we're having so many problems tonight. Um, team, also, I'm looking for the questions. Um, ooh, there's a very long question. But I can't scroll down in the chat. So if the team could just grab them and put them at the top of the chat, I'd really appreciate that. I'm going to start with, um, let's see. A uh, question to all songwriters. What is your process? What do you look for during a co-write? I find it hard to find someone with a similar style who really understands you and you work well together. I would say that I relate. I listen for something that strikes a chord in me that I relate to that somebody else is saying. Um, because if I know if you're saying something that I relate to, at least that's two people in the world that feel this. And I'm sure that we're not the only ones. So usually that's what I look for, like a little golden nugget of like, ooh, that, that, that resonates with me. And I think, I don't know, that's, that's usually my method of doing it. I don't know about you, Jay. Um, no, I love that. Thanks. I'm just thinking of the nature of the question in general. Um, if I'm being totally honest, like it kind of sounds like you're going into it, pushing an agenda. And that's a tough place to be. So my suggestion to you would be like, get rid of the agenda. Whatever happens, happens. If you write a song for you, great. If you write a song for them, great. If you write a song and you don't ever want to see that person ever again in your life, Great. <laughs> but at least then you're going into it with an open mind. Because if you're going into it being like, I'm looking for people who get my genre and my way and my thought and my me, 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 um, it's going to be hard. And not that that makes you bad or wrong in any if way. For that, this is the place to do that, though, actually. Because <laughs> we are focused on you, unlike most co Right. Right. We're, well, we're focused on you but in a way where you're coming in open about what it is you're looking for. Um, yeah. To me, that I guess that sounded like going into other co-writes and new things. Well, I thought you know? differently. I mean, I thought she was saying, you know, it's hard because I remember being in several co-writes myself. And I remember writing with this one guy. I was near a guy. He kind of writes with everybody. And he came around and started writing with me. And it was like one of the worst co-writes ever. And I was like open and I, you know, but it was just, we didn't buy. Like there just was not, he wanted to write something that was like um, too surfacey for me. And mm -hmm. I, I was buying with it. And I didn't like that. So I hear what Tiffany's saying. Like it's not easy to find the right people, 
who are really um, focused on writing together. Yeah, well, don't write with those people. Write with us. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> we'll listen to your story. No, but for real, though, like, if you're writing with somebody Problems. you vibe with them, like, don't write with them again. Um, but there is a lot you can learn from someone who you don't think you're vibing with at first, and all of a sudden you're willing to, like, both go there, and all of a sudden the coolest song comes out of it. Like, I know that Selena Back to You song was, like, three different New York writers – a couple knew each other, the other didn't. It was just a weird group. It's a huge ass song, you know? So you really never know. Um, but yeah, right with us. We'll listen to you. Absolutely. <laughs> we'll listen to you. Um, another question. Michael says, Hey, y'all, thanks so much for sharing your expertise. Multi part question here. I'm writing every day and I'm writing some of my favorite lyrics to date, but I feel like my melodies and rhythms are getting stale. How do you keep mel how do you keep your melodies feeling fresh? Let me just start with that. Listen to music. Listen to lots yeah, of music. To a lake. In different genres and yeah. And, and like if you listen to John Mayer, don't only listen to John Mayer. Like there's artists that I love that I won't even like I never listen to the full Sam Smith album. A lot of people don't know this album. I can't. Too similar to things that I do, I can't let myself fall into that trap. But I'll listen to it once and then also listen to Otis and Kendrick and Christina's new song and Eminem and, listen and to SZA. Listen to how they're, what they're doing with melodies. And sing them. Learn yeah. them. Like how the yeah. arc of melody is moving. Um, and the second part of this question is... And when you're writing, how much are you borrowing, changing from existing melodies? Where do you draw the line between something feeling original and something feel, feeling plagiarized? I mm. would say there's only 12 notes. So you, you have to go with your instincts, right? And, and like J, Jay was just saying, he can't listen to Sam Smith too much because it's too similar maybe. Yeah. So how do you, how, where do you draw the line between something feeling original and something feeling plagiarized when you're writing melody? I For me, I feel like. I don't like that. I don't think like that, personally. Yeah, I don't think I ever think like that unless something has come out and then, like, after thinking about it, I'm like, oh, this resembles really closely to something else. Let's just change a couple notes if that can be fixed. If not, let's just come up with something new. Like, Mm -hmm. I don't really see the point in, like, towing the line super close with something. But if something to me, like, again, like what you said, just go with your instinct, I think. If you're feeling mm -hmm. like this feels original to you, it probably is. Like, or like, mm -hmm. at least not super stepping on the toes of something else. But if you're like, oh, this sounds really close, I'd say, like, think about it a little bit and decide what you want to do from there. Yeah. yeah. I actually really, really like what you said, Carrie. Because you, you know. Notes. Yeah, there's 12 notes. I mean, and what are you going to do? Like, you can't write with thinking that way because that will make you be editing while you're writing. So you have to just go. And then after the fact, like Miranda said, you listen back. And then if you feel like it's too close. But, hey, there, sometimes you're not going to know, right? It's like when Sam Smith wrote that song with the whole Tom Petty thing, the Jeff Lynne, Tom Petty, Stay. The song Stay was Stay with uh, me. Stay With Me was very much like that Tom Petty song. And when the song went big, then Tom Petty, you know, they reached out, Jeff Lynn and Tom Petty reached out to Sam Smith's crew. And Sam Smith's crew right away went, oh, yeah, we didn't even realize it. I mean, sometimes you're going to, we're so influenced. How can we not be, but not to have the, that thought when you're writing. Like, just mm -hmm. you have to trust yourself, I think, is what they're saying and what I'm saying. And then you can always analyze later. And then if somebody says, hey, that sounds a lot like blah, 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 well, pay attention to that. And go listen and see if it is and then change the melody slightly so it's not a direct whatever, you know? Mm -hmm. um, another question. Hi, Jess. She's back. Hi, I'm back. Yeah. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> Gretchen says, I write in melody and verse, but I'm not confident in regards to adding chords to support my melodies. Any tips on where to start with that? That's kind of mm -hmm. a basic crafting thing, I would say, but maybe Jess, do you want to speak to that? Well, I'm wondering, do you play an instrument, Gretchen? 
Gretchen, do you play an instrument? And if not, you need to play an instrument, right? <laughs> and if you, if not, then come and write with us and we'll help you do that. Uh, Miranda? Also, I think like the easiest thing to do if you are learning an instrument is just mm-hmm. look up the chords of a song that you like and then mm-hmm. just write a new song to those chords. Totally. I do that all the time because I'm not like super great with chords. So mm-hmm. that's my method. <laughs> Word. So go listen to a song that you love the chords, take the chords and write a different song to it. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, another question from Eric and then one from Maria. Uh, Eric says, I'm 15 year old. I'm a 15 year old who's written many songs, but only recorded two, not professionally and without a band. It's my goal. Is my goal. Wait. Oh, it just moved. It's my goal to keep recording. However, possible. Wait. Okay. Wait. What does it say? <laughs> get stuff out there or work with someone to refine. What do you suggest for someone my age to make sure I get started off on the right track? My goal is to keep recording to get. Do stuff exactly out. what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Write lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of songs and put them out and show them to people and write with more people and play shows and go to shows and listen to songs and message your favorite artists and follow them, and, you know, tweet at them, and tag them. Just keep doing it. And get You're killing it. it. Get You're already it. winning. You're 15 and you've written lots of songs. You win. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Congratulations. I want to be like you. Mm-hmm. Marissa says, since I have it in mind, I have a question for the songwriters. And I'm curious if you've come across this as well. I've started I've started a lot of songs, but I'm scared to finish them. I'm afraid they won't come out right. Uh, I fear they'll be bad, and I fear they won't take me anywhere. It's probably something I should write a song about, to be honest. <laughs> so definitely relates mm-hmm. with, the, with the self-doubt. And I'm curious if any of you have ever faced a similar problem or if you have any, any advice mm-hmm. I, I think that it's called the finishing muscle. Um, mm-hmm. Songwriting, we affectionately call it that. Um, you know, you just have to push past that. I know, Jess, you spoke about this at our event. You were talking mm-hmm. about how to kind of push past that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like as songwriters, we take on so many different roles all at one time. It's like, you're writing, you're arranging, you're singing, you're editing. And I feel like part of the process is being able to kind of compartmentalize those roles. And um, there's there's a level of just kind of having to completely tune out that voice while you're writing. You know, we've all got insecurities about, you know, our work. I'm I'm experiencing that right now. I'm working on my own project. And I'm writing a ton of songs, but there's totally that element of like, is this good enough? You know, when I'm writing, I'm just constantly trying to push it. But when I'm in the actual songwriting process, there's just no way I would get a word out if I started, if I started my writing session feeling fear of, um, of even being able to put a word down. Um, but it, but I think you're actually on the perfect track where it's like, okay, you sit down and you feel fear, like dig into that and work with that emotion and work through that because it seems like if you can't work through that emotion, it might be hard to continue digging into Woo. other emotions while you're writing. Go Jess. <laughs> um, I, I love you all. I have to go. I planned it at 9 o'clock. I thought we were done at 8.30. But here's what I'm in at 8.45. I'm putting my email in here. Here's Here you go. Here's how you finish the song. Send me your song in a week. I will listen to it and hit you back. Amazing. That's what you need to me, like accountability. Mm-hmm. Just finish them. But yeah. if you're having trouble, finish them. Call a friend and say, hey, can I can I send you a song next Thursday? My little brother's 20 and is becoming a DJ. He's like, how do I write better songs? How do I write better songs? Yeah. Um, I was like, finish them. Send me a song. And then he didn't send one on Monday. And he's like, oh, can you listen to this idea? I said, I won't listen to any of it until you send me something that's done. And now he's started to send them. And he keeps doing it. He keeps getting better. So exactly. anyway. Finishing muscle. So, Thanks for joining us. I also- yeah. So sorry to go, guys. But this is awesome. I love you all. Let's write great songs. Awesome. Good to see you, bro. Good to see you.
Brandy. Bye. Bye. And then we'll, we have two more questions, and then we're gonna um, go to the rest of the webinar. Okay. okay. I had yeah, I had one thing to add. Just just about finishing the song. Um, I think just let go of the idea of like every song needs to be great that you write and just write a mediocre or a bad song and just move on and let it go. But I feel like just practice the fact finishing it just for the sake of it, even if it's bad and just let it go and move to the next one. That's my. Absolutely. Last question I'm going to take. We all write crappy songs. Um, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. lots, but the finishing is important. <laughs> like Jay said. Um, yeah. Gabriel says, my husband and I have been working on our next album and have compiled a lot of material and started the process of recording our demos. When is the right time to consider a co-write? Hmm. Well, I think that's the perfect time, actually, to consider a co-write because you've got a good uh, start on the record and a co-writer could bring something uh, more to it. What, what are your thoughts, guys? Hmm. Yeah, I think it's always cool to bring in another perspective to mm -hmm. open up because you might have something going on but you don't know exactly what you're missing and you also get really in sync with another person but like bringing mm -hmm. an outside opinion i think just like opens the whole thing up a little bit more and it is a good time mm -hmm. to bring those in because you you might be able to level up your stuff before you release it mm -hmm. it might be good and you can make it great you might be missing the single you know like something like that mm -hmm. but yeah we, i had an uh, artist, uh, husband and wife couple that uh, brought me their album, and they were set to repeat. And I was listening, and I'm like, I don't think you have what you need. And they said, Well, we have another three songs we're going to put on the next album. I'm like, Oh, well, let's listen to it for this album. You know, so sometimes mm -hmm. you need that perspective and uh, somebody else to help you up level that record, like Miranda's talking mm -hmm. about. Oh my God, you guys, this was so amazing. Thank you so much. <laughs> Miranda and Jess for joining us. This was so Thank incredible. you. Yeah, as always, really great conversations, great people. Good to see you. I miss you guys. Yes. Um, yes, I see you too. Thank you so much, Gary. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye.